All right, today we're gonna to go through and talk about the money multiplier theory in economics. So we're gonna take what we learned about with circular flow with the households, the product market, the firms, the factory market, how money circulates throughout the economy. And we're gonna learn what happens when money gets injected into the economy and how it supposedly ends up helping the economy grow. And it's all based off the multiplier theory. So when you take a look at this, it all revolves around households, remember, okay? So simple example, just to show you how this ends up working. Let's say that households increase their spending by $100. What's gonna happen is, remember, based off the theory, is that $100 is gonna go into product market, okay? That $100 has to go to firms, factory market back out without any leakages into other areas, okay? This is how basically the theory works. So we're gonna go ceteris paribus, keeping one variable at a time, no leakages, just the money circulating throughout the economy. So what happens is that $100 goes in the product market, the $100 goes to the firms, $100 goes to the factory market, and the $100 comes back into households. Now, depending on the MPC and MPS, okay, MPC equals marginal propensity to consume, okay? So that's what the typical average American is consuming. So let's say right now, we're consuming at a 95% rate. That means for every $100, okay, that goes around, okay, we're gonna end up spending 95. So when that $100 comes into households, $95 is gonna get spent. That $95 is gonna go all the way around again, and $95 will come back into households as income. Now, out of that $95, we're only going to spend 95% of it. So let's just say it's $90 to keep the math easy. $90 is going to get spent again, and $90 is going to come back to us, okay, in the form of money, cash. And it's going to keep doing that, and eventually, you're going to run into zero because of money and the 95% and so on. Now, instead of adding all these up and seeing how much money ends up being, being created in the economy, you can use the formula. So if you take a look down here, the formula is 1 over MPS. Now MPS is marginal propensity to save. So marginal propensity to save. So if we're spending 95% of our money, we're saving 5%. So if you plug it into the formula down here, okay, 1 over MPS, 1 over 0.05, equals 20. So that means our multiplier is 20. So what we can do then is go to the multiplier times the amount of money that gets spent in the economy. So remember, the very first $100 that gets spent in the economy, we can go ahead and we can say 20 times 100. And what's going to happen is you're going to have an increase of $2,000. So that $100 that gets spent by households just circulating around, depending on how fast money is going throughout our economy, okay, that $100 can grow into $2,000 because that first $100 comes back in as income. Then it goes around and comes back in again as $95 of new income for the household. goes around again, $90 new income, and it just keeps adding up. If you add all these up, what you would get is this amount right up here that $2,000 okay, could be generated based off the multiplier theory. Now, there's a couple things. Okay, We could have households cut back spending. So for example, right now, with our economy, what's going on with you know the virus, households, they might start cutting back because they're afraid to lose their job and they don't know what's going on with the economy. So if they cut back and spend $100 less, you would take that negative $100 times 20 and it would mean that our economy would shrink $2,000. So there's three main factors that can you know, do this. You have households, you have the government. If the government spends $100, you times it by the multiplier. And then, of course, it would generate how much money would grow based off government spending. And right now, our government is already talking about a stimulus package where they're going to spend money to try to help our economy grow okay, and remain intact or that it doesn't get hurt too much based off what's going on. And then the last one is you have firms. Firms can spend money. So households, government, and firms can all spend money to help create money. If they cut back on spending, they cut back on spending, they cut back on spending, then it slows our economy down. All right? Now, the MPC and MPS don't always stay at 0.95 and 0.05. 
okay? Back before the recession, back in the early 2000s, our MPC was 1.01. .01. We are spending a dollar and a penny for every dollar we made. So this was negative 0.01. So what that meant is if you divide negative 0.01 into 1, it's infinity. As fast as money goes around, okay, that money would come back and be spent. Money would go around and be spent. And basically, the money, as fast as money could go throughout the economy, our economy would grow. Now, that's not typical. Let's go ahead and let's say Japan. Let's say Japan's MPC is 0.75. What that means is their MPS then is 0.25. So what you would do with Japan, let's say those households spent that $100, Okay, you'd go ahead and you'd do the multiplier down here. So let's go 0 0.25 into 1 equals 4. So if they spent the $100, not the negative, let's say they spent the $100, that $100 would come back in, okay, right here the first time. Then they would only spend 75% of it. So they would only spend $75. That $75 would come back in, and then they'd only spend 75% of that. Well, you don't have to do all that. You can just take the multiplier 4 times the original amount that was spent, that $100, and their economy, 4 times 100, could grow $400. You could see the higher the MPC, like the United States, 0.95, the economy can grow faster because more money is being circulated, more money is being spent back in the economy rather than saved. But someone like Japan or China or somebody that has a higher savings rate, their economy is not going to grow as fast when the money gets spent. That's why it's so important for households, the government, and firms to continually spend money in our economy to help our economy grow.